What's up guys, James here from Reflect the Screen, and I am reviewing Super Troopers 2, I watched it recently, and I am... Super Troopers 2 is directed by Jay Shannon Sarkar, who did the first Super Troopers 17 years ago. He also wrote this one along with a bunch of different writers, I believe they call themselves Broken Lizard. Um, they're back again, so it's more of the same, and you don't have to see the first one to understand this one, although I've been told the first one's a cult classic. I say that because I haven't seen the first one, and that's in the effort of full disclosure. If you want to write off this review because I haven't seen the first one, I mean, what does it really matter? Because they both are in the same vein anyway, so, I mean, what, what do I have to lose? I mean, clearly the story, while it is a direct sequel has nothing to do with the first one all that all that much i mean it's funny they kind of explained the first one anyway let, let's get into what this movie is super troopers 2 features a return of the original cast captain o'hagan thorny harva mac carl foster and rabbit the troopers were fired after a ride along gone horribly wrong the United States struck a temporary deal with Canada to expand Vermont's state line into a part of North America, which gave jobs to our troopers, but took away jobs from three Royal Canadian Mounted Police Officers. The three Mounties are played by Will Sasso, Tyler Labine, and Hayes MacArthur. Hilarity is supposed to ensue when both police departments clash over who's better than who. Now, the beginning of this film sets a very zany tone, and admittedly I was so confused as to where the heck this film was going, but then it's revealed very quickly it's a dream sequence, and boom, we're stuck back into reality where our troopers are retired and not knowing what the heck they're doing. But it set a certain tone where the rest of the film played off of it. Very immature jokes. Uh, I understood where this comedy was going 20 minutes into the film. And it was going into this realm of laziness. I mean, we're in 2018 and we still can't get out of a comedy script that includes sex jokes all the time, Canadian jokes, female and male organs jokes, female hormone jokes, misogynistic jokes, and... Fart jokes. Fart. We're still with the fart jokes. Look, maybe the first one was all about this, and from what I heard, it really was. But it didn't hold up here, and it was an incredibly dry formula that by the midway point of the film, I was tuned out rather than engaged. Now, the film does try to create some sort of plot point um, where the troopers come across a bunch of drugs and a lot of contraband and they try to go back to this plot three times and it didn't really work for me it was very rushed and it felt forced so eventually we get cameos from other actors like Emmanuel Shikri and Rob Lowe it just they just fall flat they fall as the butt of so many jokes and none of it connects with me and I believe it's just because this entire film is not my brand of comedy I mean I've grown up. Maybe 10 years ago this would have made me laugh more, but I'm not feeling this at all. And y'all, let me tell you, the bigger comedy sequences fall flat on their face. There's a sequence that includes two of the troopers going to a brothel and it tries to set up some overly sexualized joke and it didn't really work at all. I feel like the film was forcing the comedy rather than letting the funny develop on its own. Mm, physical humor, check. Sex joke, check. Fart joke, check. I mean, you're going down the list at this point of things that don't appeal to me and I think that don't work in the film at all. I can see how some would probably find this funny, but I don't know, maybe they're not sober. So there's a sharp decline in this film. The quality of the film literally takes a nosedive as we get into the third act, and I think it's just because I didn't really find interest anymore. The formula, like I've said many times in this review, is what? It's dry. It does its best to pander to more clever comedy when you bring in politics and you bring in, well, you stupid Americans, and like, they do that all the time, and sometimes the accents half the time are so overdone. I kind of find some of the moments funny when they're not trying to be over the top zany and dumb. As for the acting, I mean, there's no connection that the actors make with the audience. I feel like this was the director going around with his best pals and just recording all of their daily activities. How stupid can we be? And let's put it on a big screen. I almost struggle to find out how this movie even got made. I think the pacing um, was fine. I do enjoy that the film was short, uh, thankfully, because my goodness, I wanted this to be over as quickly as possible. Again, there's not too much here in terms of substance. I guess if you're a huge fan of the first Super Troopers, you'll enjoy this, but if you're looking for a clever comedy, a comedy that'll probably make you fall out of your seat in laughter, you can skip this one. Just throw it to the side, out the window, and don't even look for it ever again because Super Troopers 2 is a very bad movie. Unfortunately, it was just such a lazy comedy that never picked up its feet and just dragged itself through the mud. So there you have it, guys. 
that's my review on Super Troopers 2, a film that I really hope to never have to speak about ever again. Let me know what you think in the comments. Give this a like if you liked it, of course, and go ahead and subscribe for more content from myself. If you want to go and see some things that don't make their way onto film, some more written articles, go to reflectthescreen.com where you'll see a bunch of content we post, well, I post daily. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And again, I'll catch you at the next screening that will hopefully not be Super Troopers 2 or a film like it ever again.